Barcelona is definitely a city that's very rich in skate culture for decades now. Barcelona is one of the most like perfect cities to visit during the summer and the holidays. Antes que nosotros ya había habido patinadores como Panko, por ejemplo, que cuando nosotros empezamos a patinar, se le hacía 11 años ya había sido campeón de España en el Inter Mundo. En 84, yeah, because then 86 is when they built Sands. And that's when I started skating at Sands. Before that, yeah, it was in Avenida Gaudí, Sagrada Familia. In Barcelona, they used to have like a, a couple of like mini ramps in some like neighborhoods and stuff. But the first actual skate park where everybody was meeting up, it was a Tulo Park near uh, Sands. And maybe, maybe uh, a weekend out of the, the month, some guys they were going to Sands, but they were skating the the bottom part, where is that long uh, black marble ledge, doing slappies, or just like <laughs> doing power slides, and that's pretty much it, you know, it was pretty funny. And Sands becoming like a, an actual skate spot where everybody was going and skating on the daily basis, probably was like on 88, 89. So it was kind of like two sessions, you know, like skate park, like mini ramp and like transition session and then like street skating at Sands. It was like Turo Park until they tore the uh, Turo Park down, but people they were skating mainly like Sands and then Universitat at night time, between like 92, 93 to 96, because then it was like maybe like 50 or 60 people every other day at Sands, and it was people from other villages or other towns around Barcelona that they were coming at skating at Sands as well as the Turo Park. So one day we went through Magba, you know, just to whatever, just to see the plaza. We we're looking at the ledges like, oh no man, these are way too low. They're lower than the tables at Sands, you know, the bottom part of the tables at Sands. Like, okay, now let's go to Universitat, it's better. <laughs> so we didn't even skate at Magba, you know. The first uh, people that started skating at Magba, it was Paolo and then Baltas, Baltasar, you know, Balta, his brother. Those guys, they, they waxed a, a little little piece of the, the block at, at Magba. And then we see like footage of them skating and we were like, oh, it, actually it doesn't even look that bad on film, you know? Let's go try, let's go see it. And once we tried, you know, and then we saw the grind and the slide, we thought like, okay, let's, let's come here more often, you know, it's, it's fun, you know, it's, it's good. <laughs> Parallel, I'm, it started to be a spot Right away when they built it, you know, we were going there just as a many had, you know. And I remember the trees over there, they were like about like waist high and they were like really thin. They were like so thin and now when you go through there, you see like they're like huge trees. And then as a boom, as a worldwide known, like as Barcelona, as one of the main places where to go and skate, probably it was like around like 2002, 2004. I remember like one summer, it was like so crazy that Barcelona was looking like uh, like if it was California, you know, because every other place you were going to, you're like running into like some pros or amps, you know, like everybody from the industry basically was here that one summer. It was pretty funny. And then, of course, you know, like you see in any other video, footage from Barcelona, you know, like Habitat videos, some of those guys, they were renting out like apartments and they were staying like, probably like, not even for the summer, just the, the whole year. You know, I remember like Kenny Reed moved down here, Kenny Hughes, a bunch of people from the US moving in uh, to Barcelona just for skateboarding. Just came to Barcelona as a filmer uh, with some dudes just to check it out. And, and there was amazing skaters, so like Road with Retamal, so, yeah. so many dudes that were ripping. So my whole deal was every summer I would do, all, do that, like do that contest circuit, and when it was done, go to Barcelona, right? So it usually ended in like July, and then all of August, probably some of September, I'd be in Barcelona. I was working on the firm video, and there was the same thing. There was another contest, like another contest, and we, and a bunch of people went, and so I brought the whole firm team, um, like, and a bunch of other homies, and like, 
you know, we, like, we're going to do the contest and do the same. Stay two weeks and have like a filming trip. And then that's when we really first started skating Magba. I miss Stomp actually is the most because it's now it's like insane. It's what people skate there or whatever. But if you knew Stomp, yeah. um, that was the best. That was the, the, the first and before Magba it was Stomp. People yeah. were gripping and like the like most amazing skater. Like, to me it was the essence of Barcelona. Hi, my name is Marco Sotano. I'm the president of Sun Forever Association. It's a group of locals that wants to preserve the use of skateboarding in the plaza for many more generations. The last five years, our association has been doing many events to bring all the whole benches here, the wooden ledge on the stairs. We've been doing classes with some schools, uh, working with the city councils to bring a positive impact uh, to the neighborhood. The plaza is going to be closed for a year and a half since this uh, January. They're going to reveal the plaza as it was back in the days, but they're going to reveal this part of the plaza, not the old world with the many paths and the low to high. We're going to have a skatable plaza right here with the benches, the wooden ledges, the old fountain that we use as a many path, etc. I really want to thank to everyone who helped us in this long project, building some obstacles in the plaza, coming to the events, playing some music, giving us all the support, and I want to make sure you all feel appreciated. Thanks for everything. is that time definitely concept of time gets very warped in Barcelona eight years has gone by like that but uh, in a good sense the fact that there's like a lot of nice DIYs here as well there's a good DIY movement that's been going pretty strong this is like Spotter, Picnic, Bovila all these places are super nice so August is kind of like summertime is a good time to just have fun sessions in between beach missions and things like that Keep the body moving, but don't die, like battling the trick in the sun, you know. I'd say my favorite spot in Barcelona is Bobby Lab. <laughs> Crazy thing for me, I remember like, you know, tourists travel the world looking at like tourist places and uh, famous things for like skaters coming to Barcelona and I remember the first time I came here like you just, you pretty much go out in any direction and you'll see like famous spots you've seen in videos. Obviously I'm like pretty numb to it now after being here for eight years but when you first get here, everywhere you go you're just like blown away how close everything is, like all the famous skate spots you've seen in videos. And, it's nice when people come from out of town because then it kind of helps you like relive that feeling when you see like how stoked they are just like seeing all these famous spots everywhere like you, go, you have one destination and on the way you see like five other spots and sometimes you don't even make it to the destination because you get caught up skating all the other things. So Barcelona it's pretty magical for in that sense like architecturally speaking it's, it's crazy how well it works for skating here. Like, the design of the the city and the plazas and, and just how not everything's 90 degrees. There's a lot of banks and different different types of uh, good skatable setups.
everybody who comes to Barcelona is going to have a different story. And I think that's what's epic about Barcelona.